Any any other comments on some of the stuff today? Yes, Patrick Sweeney, the one and only. Daniel, I'm, <clears throat> this is not meant as criticism, but when I read your your agenda, I think it was last night or the night before. I saw your statement that we're going to eliminate corruption in career politicians and put principal conservatives in public office. That's a worthy goal, but um, years ago I started collecting aphorisms from people my father. Scott mentioned one. You've got to know the difference between motion and progress. Mm-hmm. All motion is not progress. Amen. <coughs> John Adams said, and Madison a few years later said the same thing. We can change the rulers. We can change our form of government. But we'll not obtain lasting liberty. Because what we didn't talk about, and I'm sorry I didn't get to Chris Allen, the only time we talked about the larger problem was in that section. We're losing the cultural battle. Politics is only part of the culture. I've mentioned downstairs, I've got four kids from almost 50 to 31. It's a constant struggle to keep them on the right reservation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've lost a generation or more. Yeah. No. In 2006, I was chairman of the marriage amendment campaign. We won by 56%. I think we were dissatisfied. We thought we should have won by better than 60%. Yep. Within 10 years, we've lost it. We couldn't, we wouldn't stand in prayer that we're put on a ballot again right, right now. Right. And if we don't look at this in terms of a larger cultural shift, we can take over state senator, we can take over the Republican Party, but to what end? If we're, it won't, it won't stick. I think Doc mentioned Antonio Gramsci, the Italian communist, who was banished because he took a, a different tack with the leadership of the party and with Moscow. He said, we're not going to win with more tanks and guns. We're going to take over the cultural institutions. It'll take us 100 years. That was 100 years ago. They took it over long before 100 years. The media, all the voluntary institutions, those they couldn't take over, they destroyed. The goal was to eliminate every mediating institution between the all-powerful state and the individual. We've let much of that happen, and we're doing nothing Effective. We're doing things. There's a lot of motion, but no progress. And if we focus only on the activity of taking over the party in the short run, we lose sight of the larger cultural battle. We will have lost it because our kids aren't connecting with us. The mine aren't, unless they're bribing. And it's very tough. I've got a son in Colorado. He's been there for 20 years. In the last 16 years, that state has gone from reliably red to permanently blue. And that's going to happen. It's happened in Virginia. I don't think we're a purple state anymore. Because we've, we've, we've left the battlefield in many cases. I have, this is not self-aggrandizement, but I've run many statewide referendum and regional referendum battles. We've never lost one. Why? Because the incumbents don't control it. In 1990, we had a constitution, or two constitutional amendments to amend the uh, constitution to allow to to eliminate voter approval of debt at the state level and at the local level. There were millions of dollars stacked up on the other side, the Chamber of Commerce, all the major institutions were on the side of amending the Constitution. We raised $67,000, Roy Smith and I. We didn't start until October 4th. We won that four to one. Hampton Roads has gone dramatically the other way, but in 2006, 2002, when we had the sales tax referendum in, in Hampton Roads, we defeated it by 68%. So you can't tell me there's not room to build. California voted, the Hispanics voted 80% plus for Proposition 8, traditional marriage. Blacks voted 67%. Why did we have politicians who were willing to take a stand on this? On educational issues, we have incumbents that run for cover. We've had the people on our side, and we've lost them because we have not stood and fought where it mattered on cultural issues, on political issues, on whatever it mat- whatever mattered. They've been co-opted. We've let them be co-opted. 
So I think we ought to keep in mind, if we take it over, how do we define success? Is success taken over the state central committee? As Cal Thomas said uh, when Obama won, he'd been cajoling evangelicals for 30 years to get involved in politics. And what has it accomplished? We've gone backwards. Mm -hmm. And it's awfully hard to get people back involved when they've been involved and seen the frustration. So I commend what you're doing, Daniel, but let's not lose sight of the fact that we've got tectonic plates that are moving. If we're talking about activity on the surface, we better be involved in every part of this cultural change. We're going to lose if we have any way of recovery. Let's just say, because, yeah, I, definitely you, you, you open a very, very serious, very, very good point. I mean, we are, we are facing a multi-front cultural battle. I mean, Travis Witt uh, uh, has a program called oh, Christian Citizenship. I got that name right? Uh, American Transformation yeah. Company, and what we realize is that if you're not going to be active in all seven areas of cultural influence over the next 40 years, so we're building locally and globally, but we're also looking at it that you better look long-term with all of those issues that Pat's talking about, or we see the problem. Let me give you a couple of examples. Number one, culture is never changed by evangelism and prayer. That's the only thing the church is doing now. Evangelism and prayer. Cultural is changed by evangelism, prayer, and discipleship. We're not discipling anybody because we've let the government schools mm -hmm. disciple our children. We want to know why 80% don't come back to church? We all know. A hundred hours of immoral stuff or amoral stuff compared to four or five hours of church, and we think our kids are going to hang tight? Yeah. And, and, you know, a final thing that we you know, might want to say, change the narrative. Let me give you a couple examples. I'm Islamophobic and I'm homophobic. I fear for them when they breathe their last breath and stand before a holy God. That's the way you change the narrative on some of these issues. So I'm just saying we, we, we're really in a place that we had better come back to understanding why we we're even there. And then we individually have to take a look at ourselves and am I walking as if I believe that I'm going to stand in front of a holy God one day? Right. Roland, you wanted to share something? Yeah, very much uh, in, in connection with these points. I think I've talked to messaging before, and um, Pat uh, spoke to, uh, eloquently about these issues, and this is really what's been burning on my heart, is this whole issue about the, the bigger message, the longer message. We've been talking a lot about strategy and tactics, which I think are excellent, and, and I've learned a lot uh, here today. Uh, they're excellent, and we do have a tactical, strategical responsibility in this fight that we're engaged in. But I think there's a larger issue, and that is what is the message. And I think the Republican Party, our group, whatever, needs to think about a, a long-term messaging. One thing I noticed when uh, doing door knocking and so forth and bumping into Democrats when they're doing the door knocking, it seems like they have their system down, ready to go, and whenever a new candidate comes around, they just change the name on the door. <laughs> and they keep on plugging with their messaging. I think we need to adopt something like that, that we're more than just trying to fight off the Democrats. We're here for a way of life. We're here for to defend the world views. We're here to uh, defend a blessing that the Lord gave us. And um, so I just think, putting these comments together, I think that the party or this group or some entity that we work with needs to enunciate a message that is clear, that's ongoing, that's there all the time, not just when we do elections. Right. So those, those are my, my thoughts. I mean, today, today, we've, uh, today we've been addressing mostly, I mean, uh, well, addressing pretty much solely the political side of culture. Um, but what everyone has said is absolutely right. It, the, the cultural battle is so much bigger than just politics because I mean somebody said recently and I forget who it was if you could if you put if you put a pastor if you fill Congress and the White House with pastors would that fix this country? It might fix some things, but it's not going it's not going to fix the country. 